Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some great games for game night. So, land ahoy, here's five things I think you need to know about Libertalia, Winds of Gale Crest. <laughs> Greetings Sky Pirates and welcome to the flagship Galecrest. Hop aboard and meet the crew, who'll jump ship and head down to the island to squabble for treasure and reputation. Bringing back their words to the ship. Use character abilities to make sure you're first to get what you want have the most gold after three days of looting. Ahoy! Thing one, what's this game all about? So Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest is a game in which you are sky pirates and what's happening is is that you're sending your pirate crew down from your ship down to the island to try and gather treasure and resources and gold and things and bring them back to your ship. Um, so this team is an unusual one because it it's fairly shallow. In all honesty, this game could have been about anything. Um, it more feels like a service to the mechanisms of the game um, than anything else. Now, there are also some very kind of adorable um, kind of animal characters um, as part of your crew. They're not really explained. I don't really know why they're there. They're part of this world. I don't, I don't know. I found it hard to get into the theme of this one as a whole. I'm not sure I really cared about it either, but this game does feel much more mechanics than anything else. And that's completely completely fine too. Now, similar games to this. Well, this is a remake of the original Libertalia, which I have not played, I'm afraid to say. Um, but I do feel like this game is fairly unique in what it's trying to do. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to perform on your turn? So this game really is about playing the right card at the most beneficial time for you. Um, and how this works is that you start the round with a handful of cards and they are identical to everyone else's. And each card will have a number and it will also have an ability. And what's going to happen is, well, you're sending your crew down to the island, which is the game board. And so at the start of the turn, you'll place a card upside down on the board um, and they all get flipped up and they'll resolve in numerical order with the person with the highest number getting to choose a treasure first. But that's not everything because the cards have abilities and they'll trigger at different times, such as nighttime and daytime and evening. And so it's not always the best to be the highest number first. And also the reward Rewards differ each time you go down to the island. They're drawn randomly from a bag and not all of them are positive. You may not always want to get the treasure first. So there are good things like gold, there are bad things like removing characters, um, interfering with other players maybe, things, things like that. Um, so yeah, so it's not always straightforward. And then once you have that resolved, you'll return your character kind of to your ship. Um, and then after a certain number of days, depending kind of on players, um, you will determine how much kind of gold you made and then you'll move on to the next day. And those characters you use will go away and you'll get a fresh hand, um, the same as everybody else. Um, so really this game is very, very smooth. It's got a very simple concept, which is play cards, get rewards, do it in the right way. Um, but what's also interesting here is the fact that you really need to be aware of what other players are doing because they've got the same cards as you. And you don't want someone necessarily playing the same card as you at the same time, right? Um, because numbers can tie and there is a way to solve that with a reputation track. Um, but also it means you may not be able to pull off the move you wanted how you'd planned. So yeah, it's, kind of, it's, like it's simple, but there's a good bit going on here. And it's definitely very interactive. Thing three, on the table. Well, this one is bold, bright, and colorful. Yeah, it's very impressive all set up on the table. And while the board is relatively big, it is very compact, everything feels tidy, and there is a space for everything as well. Um, it takes about 50 minutes for two of us to play, and the rule book is outstanding. Zero questions, brilliant explanation, huge thumbs up for the rule book. 
replayability wise well there's a couple of nice touches here because the game itself kind of because it has so many card characters you can play with that will change a lot too but you can also flip the board over to a more difficult side stormy side um, and you can also cover up some of the abilities with extra pieces of cardboard to change them up as well so i think there's some really nice touches here to keep the game going thing four how does this game look and feel well, we've come to expect exceptional from Stonemaier Games and they've knocked it out of the park all over again. This game is gorgeous. It's got everything and anything from like little modular trays for your coins. It's got like a spinning wheel thing for you to keep track of your money. Um, some lovely cards, a lovely insert, a beautiful board. Like it really just has absolutely everything going for it. Um, I think the art is really gorgeous for the game, but seems completely arbitrary and random to me. I'm not really sure how it fits in with with anything, I suppose, the Sky Pirate things. I don't know, I just I I just didn't quite buy it. Like this this art could have been with any game. Um it didn't feel like it was necessarily part of this, despite it being very lovely to look at. But yeah, overall, as far as aesthetics goes, you know, this this is deluxe at its finest. It's lovely. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, firstly, I'm going to have to admit that I don't know how many of the criticisms I'm leveling here are really for the original Libertalia game and not necessarily the nice, the Stonemeyer version, right? So we're just going to have to take that with a pinch of salt. Um, but if anything, Libertalia has taught me a lot about me and my gaming playstyle. Um, because the main issue I have with this game is that the identical hand problem. Um, and what happened when I played it is that every time I play, picked a card for my hand that I thought was the best card for the time, my opponent would pick the same card. Um, and this didn't happen just once or twice or three times. We did whole rounds of this and it was very frustrating because what happens um, when you both play the same number card is that it, the tie is resolved by whoever has the most reputation. And I couldn't always get the most reputation when I wanted to, but also having your card go off not when you had intended can really mess with what you were planning to do. And what this really highlights for me is that my game style is that there is an optimum play at any one time. And so when you have a, hard full of a handful of cards like that, there is always one that is the right one to play right now. Or at least that's how I approach things. This is the best option I can do at the moment. Um, and the problem was, is that by both of us playing the same card at the same time, we're losing these options, right? Um, but also then if you just, I decided to, you know, maybe you should like play something different so you don't play the same card as your opponent. Well, I tried that too. And what it basically ended up with was that I had to play something suboptimal um, to be able to actually have my card function at all. And I really didn't enjoy that as a player. It wasn't very fun for me. Um, if anything, it felt like I always had to sacrifice something um, to be able to engage with the game at all. Um, so yeah, that wasn't particularly fun. It's possible I'm taking the game too seriously, but this is how I play games, right? Um, maybe for other people, it, there's a fun in figuring out what someone else is going to play, how you're going to counteract that, all that kind of thing. Um, but for my group, it was like literally we're like, this is the best card in my hand. I have to try and play it. So yeah, that was, that was an issue for me. Um, there are lots of things though to enjoy in the game here. Um, the abilities on the cards are interesting, but not as synergistic as I would have liked. They were very small things, were small benefits for playing this card and then triggering it with another one. And all of the interaction between players seemed wholly negative. Um, it didn't seem fairly positive, like you could get rid of someone's character or you could move them around or things like that. Um, and I felt that was a little bit disappointing. But I will say that this is a very well thought out, very smooth and slick game. And I think there's lots of people going to really, really like this. I'm just not one of them. Um, and it's got a lot going for it. So yeah, why not check it out if you think you're, you're interested in it, especially if you're interested in trying to kind of one up your friends and outsmart them with your cards. I think this is a good fit for that. So do I think you should have Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest in your collection? I think if you want something that's absolutely gorgeous, that's really easy to play and has a competitive edge, I think you'll really like this. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Libertalia, Winds of Gale Crest, why not shout them off in the comment box below? 
So tune in again next time for some more short and hopefully informative board game reviews.